It's a veggie BLT pita! I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway. Aloha! Veggie Pita here with a monthly tip or thing I've played. There are many games in this world, most of which I will never truly conquer, but I'll still try to play a bunch. These monthly tips are my way of giving you a mini review to help you figure out if you'll like a game or not. Since it's October, I'd normally go for a spooky game, but I really only played one game this month, and I played it obsessively, so that's what you get. Hey, it kind of works for Halloween since there are a lot of costumes. The tip for October 2015 is Persona 4 Dancing All Night for the PlayStation Vita. A quick warning here, if you haven't played Persona 4, this game does have some minor story and character spoilers. Also, if you haven't played Persona 4, the characters and music will mean nothing to you, which will probably dampen your enjoyment of the game. Before playing Dancing All Night, and probably before watching this tip, it's recommended you play Persona 4 or Persona 4 Golden. Okay, warning over. Despite being a rhythm game, Dancing All Night has a fairly substantial story mode. Much like the other Persona 4 spin-offs, Arena and Ultimax, the plot happens through visual novel-style scenes of dialogue and still images, with dancing interruptions in order to defeat enemies and save the day. How did they manage to make a game about dancing canon, you may ask? The investigation team is helping Risei's idol comeback debut by becoming her backup dancers at a festival. Right before the festival, a rival idol group has most of its members disappear, so of course our heroes have to investigate. They're brought to the Midnight Stage, which is similar to the TV world from Persona 4, but features stages based on each kidnapped girl. The ruler of the Midnight Stage has deemed that violence does nothing in this world, so the only way for our heroes to get rid of the shadows is by expressing their desires through the power of dance. Admittedly, that sounds cheesy as hell, but with the crew from Persona 4, it somehow works. There's a large focus on bonds and being true to yourself in Dancing All Night, and the investigation team has that in spades. The story is actually interesting and keeps the Persona 4 theme of mixing comedy with a dark undertone. If you want to play the story mode more than the rhythm game, setting the game to easy is the way to go, as there are no penalties for doing so. On the other hand, if you're more into the rhythm aspect and couldn't care less about the story, there's options to skip past dialogue in order to get to the dancing faster. You do need to beat the story to unlock a few songs in the free dance mode, but at least they make it pretty painless to do so if the mystery of the midnight stage doesn't appeal to you. With the story covered, it's time to get to the meat of the game, the dancing. Every rhythm game has its own method for players to hit buttons to the beat. Dancing all night seems to stymie some rhythm fanatics, but I've had no issue with it so far. Here's the deal, there are four major note patterns. A yellow circle is a basic one-touch note. Pink circles with a stretchy line between them mean you have to hit both circles at the same time. Green circles with a loop attached mean you have to hold the note for as long as the loop is. And finally there are the blue or fever circles, called scratches, where you either flick the analog stick, click either shoulder button, or if you're an outlier like me and play with the touch screen, you swipe anywhere on the screen. Each note can register as perfect, great, good, or miss, with goods and misses breaking the combo streak. Misses also lower the chance you'll clear the stage, which is shown in the little 8-bit shadow icons up top. Only a green or disco flashing icon is clearing. The rest mean you'll have to play the song again. The blue and fever scratches aren't actually necessary to hit if you want to pass a stage, but they do help out in other ways. Building up the fever gauge fast enough means that a partner can join you for a short time in a song, and most songs have two fever sections. When in fever mode, getting a good doesn't break your combo, which means you get a better score. Also, if you want to get a king crazy ranking on a song, you need to hit every note, including the scratches, and get a great or perfect on them. It's not easy, but it feels good when you finally get king crazy! There are three difficulty levels at game start, easy, normal, and hard. It's also possible to unlock an all night mode, but I haven't done that yet. And considering hard is enough to trip me up, I don't think I'll be getting to all night mode anytime soon. That's pretty much it for the gameplay. The free dance mode is separate from the story mode and you'll have to clear the stages given in order to unlock more for a total of 27 songs included in the game. There are also DLC tracks you can buy, 
However, you don't see a character in those stages, just background footage, save for the character DLC tracks, which I'll mention later. The track list seems small for a rhythm game, but Dancing All Night is packed with other goodies. There are plenty of costumes and accessories to unlock and buy, and even more with DLC. It's a lot of fun to dress each person up and see if their smooth moves can survive the ridiculousness of some costumes. There are also items you can buy that let you adjust some dance settings, like making notes come much faster or making it so you can hit any button for a note. These adjustments add extra challenge for those who need it, or make grinding for money to buy all the costumes a lot easier. Another really cool addition is the ability to watch any song you've completed be performed. The HUD and note hit noises can be turned on and off depending if you're trying to learn how to king crazy it or just want to see all the amazing dances without worrying about hitting the notes. Even cooler, there's a mode where the character just does their dance without all the background. You can have the dancer flip or mirror, making it a great way to learn the dance yourself. Speaking of the dances, they are smooth as butter. The developers did motion capture with dancers in order for each unique style to look as real as possible. I found myself distracted more than once watching the character on screen since they're so mesmerizing. That's not good for keeping a combo going, but it is good in terms of art design and direction. I love that each character has their own dance style that fits their personality, like Chie and Kanji having more athletic or harsh styles, and Yukiko doing something more akin to ballet. And oh man, Yosuke is one suave dancer. He's my favorite of the group to watch, for sure. With the small tracklist, there aren't many songs for each character to perform on, but Atlas didn't waste any effort making each dance unique and entertaining. Plus, there can be different fever mode partners, so you'll get to see all your favorites in just about every song. The songs themselves are the reason I got the Disco Fever edition of Dancing All Night. It came with a two-disc soundtrack that now lives in my car and lets me groove out wherever I go. I love the music. This is going to be something completely subjective to the player, of course, but if you like anything of what you've heard so far in this tip, then you'll enjoy the rest of what the game has in store. I spent hundreds of hours in the Persona 4 universe, so hearing amazing remixes to the songs that have gotten stuck in my head so often, and seeing the characters I'd grown to know so well dancing to them was... well, exactly what I never knew I always wanted. I love it! And that's Persona 4 Dancing All Night, a mix of visual novel and rhythm game using the well-known and loved characters of Persona 4. It's a super niche game as it may not entirely appeal to fans of just one of those things, but if you're someone like myself who loves all three, this game is almost perfect. I say almost because of the price. The game itself runs about $10 more than a normal Vita game. The DLC is high as well, with some costume packs running $3 to $4 for only 3 to 4 costumes. The extra characters you can add, Adachi and Marie, each only dance to one song, and that one song costs $5. Getting the game and all DLC out right now costs over $100. That kinda sucks! However, they do have some free DLC costumes, so if you can live with that and not fuss too much about never seeing Kanji in his seaweed-only outfit, then it should be fine. I've beaten the story mode and also cleared all of free dance mode on easy and normal. I'm working on getting all the items now and hoping my skills will increase enough for me to take on hard mode. A rhythm game is never completely beaten since it's always fun to go back and jam out to your favorites, so I know dancing all night will be in my Vita for a long time to come. If you are a rhythm-loving Persona 4 fan as well, or have questions on how to become one, let me know by leaving a comment on here, on my Twitter, or Facebook. This game matched the hype I had for it, so I'm hoping at least some of you out there like it as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed!